Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl Mary Jane. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peace, my peoples. Please comment. Please share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. So anyways, let's get into it. Love and Hip Hop Season 6, Episode 16. And we start off with Kirk and Rashida and Rashida's mother. Kirk is going off. He's upset. He's yelling at Rashida's mother saying, uh, how much are they paying you? Are they paying you enough? I can't believe you doing this. I can't believe you're trying to break up my family. I can't believe you're doing all this stuff to me. And Kurt is just going off. He's upset. He's yelling at the producers. He's just yelling. His kids are outside. They're watching. And it's like Kurt is like kind of like having a breakdown. But he's not owning up to the fact that it's he is the one that created this drama and this problem. He is the one that also allowed him and his family to be filmed on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And, you know, Kirk and Rashida talking about, look what this TV show is doing to us. You know, this is not easy. You guys are being confiscated. You know, you guys are being paid. And it's not like you're doing this for free. And you wanted to expose your marriage, your life, your kids to the public, and that's what happens. And it's just like, you know, Kurt is looking to throw the blame at everybody. He does not want this DNA test. He wants to do everything but take this DNA test. And he wants to lash out on people for no reason because he is the one that slept with Jasmine and possibly got her pregnant. So if anybody he should be yelling and screaming at is his self. For what he has done and don't take it out on his mother-in-law or his wife or production because he chose to have sex with jasmine and to have unprotected sex with jasmine and he also chose to pay her hush money he paid her be quiet money so he chose all this and he has allowed it to be filmed because at any moment he could walk away and he chose not to so don't be mad at nobody but yourself, Mr. Kurt Frost. But by the way, I must say, Kurt had on two onks. The necklace was drop dead gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous necklaces. All MG. I love them onks. I think they're diamond. I don't know if it's platinum, but it's really nice. So, you know, Kurt is upset. He was like, you mother effers got me messed up. You guys don't know who I am. I don't play these games. Yes, you do play these games. And... If he wasn't doing this drama, you wouldn't have a storyline and we wouldn't be interested. So, miss me with all that. So, anyways, Rashida, you know, she's saying, woe is me. She's saying, this is not easy. You know, Kurt's in the background saying, like, F love and hip hop. Um, forget the ratings. You know you want them ratings so we can see you next year. And I want to see you next year. So, anyways, it's all good. So, we get to Mama D's house because Mama D is having a housewarming plus a, a mommy meeting a mommy meeting of the minds to help Samantha and to help Tommy with their situation to get through their problems. And, you know, Mama D, she looks nice. She looks beautiful. I must say Deb looks beautiful, too, as well. So, anyways, you know, um, KK's there and... She continues to try to help Tommy and um, Samantha. So anyways, um, um, Tommy's on her way and she's with Tammy and they're talking about Dime. Tommy is like, you know, I wasn't I wasn't coming at Dime. I wasn't talking junk to, at Dime. When I said anybody can get it, I was just speaking in general. And Dime took it personal because that means that that means that she has some deep seated, some deep rooted jealousy towards me. So I'm glad I got to see her true colors. And um Tommy, I believe that you were upset with um, Dime because she made up with Jocelyn and she went to Jocelyn video shoot, in my opinion. So anyways, you know, Tammy was like, you know what, I won't do that again, I'll mind my business. And Tammy was like, you know, we're just going to go chill at Mama's D's house or whatever and eat some good food. And so, you know, Tommy throws up, you know, Mama D is known for moving. OMG, Tommy two shots. Then Tommy said, also, I like to talk to Miss Deb with her raspy voice. She sounds like she's in a mob. She sounds like one of the mob wives. I was like, Tommy's going in. And Tommy looked pretty as well. So did Tammy. So they show up to the house and, 
you know, Tammy surprised because she didn't know that Tommy's mother was going to be there. It was going to be an intervention. And so she's like, oh, man, not again. Oh, yes, sir. So anyways, you know, Tommy and, and um, Tammy, they walk in. Uh, Mama D goes to talk to Tommy to tell Tommy that her mom's here. And Tommy was like, I know. So Deb is talking to Samantha to tell Samantha, hey, listen, own up to all own up to everything that you did say yes say yes and we can work through this and blah 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 and one of the rules of the meeting was no drinking and guess who has a uh, a cup in their hand with alcohol none other than samantha she's drinking when she was not supposed to be drinking so this shouldn't have been any like it should have been a dry party because samantha does have an illness it is being an alcoholic is an illness so anyways samantha so KK takes her drink away. So then, you know, Tommy and Samantha and all the other mom mothers and also um, Tammy's mother, she's there as well. And so then they start the intervention and, you know, Samantha is like, you know, I want you to be my daughter. I want, I, I want us to be mother and daughter. I want us to have a relationship. I haven't had a hug. I want to know what's the problem and all that other stuff. And then from there... Tommy tries to reply and so we never had no mother and daughter relationship and what are you talking about I gotta hug you for you to hug me and what you're trying to say I'm not your daughter and Samantha was like I did all this for you I stole for you I lied for you I went to jail for you I shoplift and Tommy's like ah and then you know Deb is like stop hold up this is not how it's supposed to go this is not how it's supposed to be you're supposed to own up for your actions Mrs. Samantha and Samantha's not owning up to her actions so it is it is going down so Samantha is like so so Samantha's saying all these things that she done for her daughter and how she was 17 years old and she didn't know how to be a mom she didn't know how she did the best that she could and Tommy was like miss me with that you're gonna try to tell me stealing and go to and going to jail as as being a good mother so Tommy jumps up and she's walking away Deb is like let's stop it but you know what I must say? I'm surprised because Tommy has on underwear. When she got up, we saw her underwear. So we 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 know a long time ago when Tommy was first introduced to the show and she got into a fight, she didn't have on any underwear. But today, tonight, she had on underwear. So that was cool. So the intervention went very wrong and went, it derailed. You know, Deb is like, you guys need real serious help. Deb was like, Samantha, you got to own up to what you did. You don't want to really lose your child. You have not lost your child. I have lost my child. I have lost my child. He was my 10 year old son. And then I lost a second son. And that's real pain. That's real hurt. Because, you know, Deb is just trying to tell Samantha, nobody wants to hear this woe is me story because you're not, because if you really really want to um, make amends with your daughter you have to do what you're supposed to do to make that amends before it's too late and Deborah just letting her know that it's too late for me because my sons are gone my two sons are gone so I'm in real pain so it so they go from there and so you know Tammy mother says all you got to do is say I'm sorry and just ask her how you can help so you know um, Tammy's mother she's doing everything that she can to try to help Samantha because she wants you know was on drugs or whatever so that seems over and then so we get Jocelyn she meets up with Stevie J she brings the baby the baby looks beautiful and you know um, Jocelyn is like you know hey so what's going on Stevie you guys left me your sister left me everybody left me and abandoned me like usual Stevie saying that you know we abandoned you because of the way you act the way you mistreat us um the way that you talked about my daughter the way you came at my daughter you didn't act like an adult um and so you know Jocelyn was like she can't beat me your daughter she can't beat me I was snap I was slapped that dirty nasty funky wig off her head how can you talk about the man that you're supposed to marry daughter like that I would not want you around my children Jocelyn so you know Mimi has a point I don't believe Mimi is upset but you're threatening you know Stevie J's older older daughter I wouldn't want you around my children and then you're saying it right in front of his face then you're saying it on camera so these words can never be taken away so you know Jocelyn was like in um 
and I, I would have slapped her and I was acting like an adult and Stevie was like no an adult would just say I'm sorry and let Savannah say what she needs to say and that was that so Jocelyn was like you know what Stevie um, I'm going to New York for some promo or whatever and I want to I want you to come with me too and then I want you to bring um, Estella with you and so you can fight Estella right in front of me and you know stevie j is like oh i don't know about all that and then stevie j was like we had conditions on us being together you were supposed to apologize to my daughters we we're supposed to have a kumbaya type of relationship everything's supposed to be going well and then we get engaged you move in and it's not it's not going that way and stevie j is like you've been keeping me from my daughter i've been trying to call i've been trying to facetime you and you won't answer the phone you won't facetime with me and jocelyn was like no i would never do that and then stevie's like you blocked me and we know Jocelyn is lying so Stevie J was like you blocked me and she was like oh no Stevie I would never do that Stevie don't go there with that I don't want to hear that and you can tell Jocelyn is already upset she's mad she doesn't want to be bothered with this bullshit she's kind of like done and there could be some things going on behind scenes that we don't know about but her and Stevie J is just a roller coaster to just keep going and keep going it always derailing it never really goes up it just derails on the bottom so it is so that's that's where they go so then we get treasure p we get horaya they meet up with um lovely mimi at the at lovely mimi's um nail shop or whatever so you know treasure p wants to go there to talk to mariah because they kind of got it like on uh on the wrong footing when they first met because of um horaya and treasure p dating married men so anyways um it, it goes left you know um Mimi's Mimi starts off wrong. She starts off. You guys came on Atlanta. You guys came to Atlanta on the wrong foot, talking about you like married men. You date married men, and you guys going around sleeping with your boss's um your boss's husband. And she was like, "That's some thought shit. That's some." dirty nasty stuff and she was like i can't be hanging out with you guys because you guys I, you know i can't be around whoring around town you know what i mean she was just like you know um these guys are disrespectful and all this other stuff so she was like so then you know treasure people was like i'm put my let me get my shoes on and she's trying to get her shoes on and mimi's just i don't mimi's overly amped and overly upset with treasure p and horaya and you know horaya's not even upset after mimi you know lovely Mimi blew her cover and, and snitched on her to Sierra so not Sierra um yeah I think her name is Sierra uh, the lady from the glam shop so you know Haraya is not even that upset but you know Haraya asks you know Mimi is she is she hanging with um Sierra and all this other stuff and she was like nah she was like but I did you know spill the beans and it was like um Mimi lovely Mimi was overdoing it it was just like unless she has some real animosity towards you know these two girls that were sitting in her shop so it goes left um lovely Mimi tries to go and fight treasure p I guess because this is the f finale that everyone's trying to get their spots in but if if out of the three girls lovely Mimi treasure p and Horaya if they bring anybody back even though you know I I regret to say this they should bring back back treasure p because she got into two altercations she got beat up twice on the show and she was about to fight lovely mimi so she has put in work to be on this show she's been taking l's so you know you know she just had you know lovely mimi just diss the shit out of her call her thought call her a hoe and said she and saying that she can't go around hoeing with them and all this other stuff you know her riot, she didn't really say much she said she did a little bit of yelling so they picked um treasure p up and they carried her out and they had lovely mimi pinned to her one of her massage chairs so she couldn't move so it went left so we know they ain't friends i don't think they ever was friends but it just seemed like um lovely mimi was overly upset so when it, we get to um rashida she's at her shop you know kurt's daughter's there her stepdaughter's there her mom is with her and she gets a note from jasmine jasmine saying hey i'm sorry i should have spoke to you i should have did this i should have did that i should have did everything else but what I did and so in the notice says there is a DNA test in here so you know um 
I should have read the DNA test or come to find out Logan Bullard is not the father. Isn't that the, like the same last name as Rob Bullard? I don't know. So anyways, Logan is not the father. So now Rashida feels like she has to do a lot of thinking because now um, it's coming down to Kurt may be the father. And there's a lot of rumors saying that Kurt is the father. So we'll find out on a reunion or whatever. But it's just like, <sighs> Rashida, how much more can you take? How much more can you... Uh, go through but you know you got to do what you have to do if you want to keep your marriage and you know maybe you guys can get counseling and you can raise this baby as your own i have no idea so it also kind of like explains why kurt don't want his dna test does kurt really believe that he is the father it's like that so rashida was like now it's a whole different level like she feels like it's a wrap for her and she, and it really makes her realize that she has a lot of thinking to do and she has to prepare for maybe a divorce in the near future but i don't think that's gonna happen so then we get samantha and we get tommy they meet up at you know a doctor's office for therapy um it goes left immediately and then you know um Samantha, she leaves and she's crying. She was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of this. We never get anywhere. Um, because, you know, Tommy was like, you know, I don't know if she's sincere. I don't know if she's being real. I don't know if she's lying. I don't know what she's doing. And so then Samantha is coached back into the therapy session. She just goes in there. She grabs Tommy. She gets to her knees. She starts to cry and beg and plead for forgiveness. And she tells Tommy that she's sorry. She's sorry. Please forgive me. I want to make our relationship better. Tommy starts to cry and she goes I love you too they say they love each other and they're gonna try to work on it and make their relationship better because Tommy doesn't want this generational curse to pass down to her daughters so she so she just tells and then at the end you know Tommy says I just had a fucked up life and that was like one of the realest moments here on Love and Hip Hop when Tommy was like yo I don't know man I just had a fucked up life and you know that was real and I was deep and I came from my heart that she really felt bad about her life and the situations and the trials and tribulations that she went through even the mistakes that she made and you know being on tv with her mom and exposing her mom's problems and their problems and it's some real shit that you can't hide you can't throw under the rug like tommy was saying so it's deep they apologize to each other and they're crying and they're hugging so hopefully they will continue with therapy and they can work it out because it's nothing like a mother's love and it's nothing like a daughter's love to a mother so we're moving forward. We get to Stevie J. He's at his house. No, he's at the club because he's about to have our opening um, to introduce the first queen of the um, Danger Zone Latino label. And he brings his two daughters. He puts them in VIP. Stevie J looks nice in his white um, suit. He looks very handsome. And so his daughters are upset. They're like, yo, I hope it, I hope it ain't your baby's mother. Baby mama who? And then the daughter goes, Jocelyn, that baby's mother. And he doesn't answer. And I was like, oh. And so Savannah was like, if Jocelyn's here, I'm going to throw tomatoes at her or whatever. So anyways, Jocelyn is out in New York ready, getting ready for her promo. And Stevie J's here in Atlanta introducing his new queen of his latino danger zone records and he introduced her and it's none other than estella and she comes out and she looks good and he introduces her and savannah was like oh i like estella my father's been loving the latinas lately but estella oh she is pretty and she's and she's good and i'm glad it ain't jocelyn so now we know estella is the queen of danger zone records We'll see how far that goes before Jocelyn derails that situation and it blows up in Stevie J's face. So, anyways, then they show in the same in the same um, scene they show how difficult Jocelyn was, how she was fighting, carrying on, and all the fights over the years that we learned and we watched, and you know most of us enjoyed seeing Jocelyn fight or not. And just her antics, just how she acts, how she was real about it, but maybe she was under the influence of some type of substance. So she was just pissed off because we don't we hear everybody talking about how bad production is, how bad this is, but like the stuff that she done did to Stephen J's daughter and, and the stuff that she said about Savannah and makes you believe that Jocelyn is really out of control and they created a monster. And the monster is here and she's real. Her name is Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican princess. So it is what it is. So anyways, um, 
Jocelyn's appearance to the Wendy Williams show is canceled because it's supposed to be her and Stevie J. And she's a no-show because Stevie J's a no-show. So Wendy made the announcement that we're supposed to have the whole family. But apparently, they they can't even get along. And so some of the story is that Stevie J, that he asked, you know, Love & Hip Hop production for permission if he can go on the show, whatever. And he didn't want to do it, and so he didn't have to do it. And Jocelyn didn't want to be filmed in New York going to the show. So they're saying that they don't know if Jocelyn is going to be coming to the reunion or not, but we know she's going to be there. So it's just nothing but drama between Stevie J and Jocelyn. And, you know, Stevie J is talking about that he's going to make Estella um, um, bigger than the Puerto Rican princess. So he likes to build nobodies into somebody. So let's see if Stevie J can build Estella into the professional, the uh, professional artist. So let's see if that happens. Let's see if Stephen J still got the juice. So, you know, um, so, you know, Jocelyn is pissed because he didn't show up. So then we get to like, it's over now. So we get to Tammy, her and Waka Flock is going to stay together and she's going to work her marriage out. Then we get to uh, Mimi, she wants Jocelyn nowhere near her daughter. She's not obsessed with her daughter. Uh, she's not obsessed with Jocelyn. She just wants that monster away from her daughter, never to be around her daughter. Totally understandable, especially how she's coming after Savannah. So I feel you. So we get Carly Red. She has a new shop. She's doing good. Her and Caesar loving each other. Let's see how long Caesar and Carly Red stay together. We got Jock saying that he wish he would have never went back to Carly Red, and he's gonna stay up in the mountains in his treehouse and feed his animals. But I have a feeling he's he, he's gonna be back with Carly Red, and then Stevie J got all his kids with him except for Bonnie Bella. Um, his sons, both of his sons are there. They made up. His grandson's there. And Stevie J looks like a really good father. They're having a good time. You know, they're swimming. They're enjoying each other. And he was like, it is what it is. He's going to try to do the best that he can to keep his daughter in his life. I'm Bonnie Bella. And he's going to have to deal with the consequences of Jocelyn and, and making, you know, Estella the queen of his record label and not showing up to the Will, uh, Wendy Williams show. And then Dime, she's searching for a new home, and she's about to get married, and um, she's ready to build her life with Sean, and she's happy. So, until the reunion, peace, I'm out. Please like, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, but what do you think about Jocelyn? Do you think Jocelyn is a monster? Did they create a monster, or you think the production is making her look bad because, you know, she gave uh, Mona... Uh, she threw shots at Mona. So tell me what you think. Peace.